All right, let's, uh, let's go on and do a little bit more of this customization. Um, what we've done so far, we still have more to do, but just to take stock of what we've got, we've uh, edited the title and the footer and the background and this welcome text, for example. And notice that if you go to the different screens, that text changes. That's nice. But as I continue to alpha test this, as I continue to develop this, I figure something else out here. If I go to one of these sub pages under Learn Computers and I click on COM 101, for example, the text of the header is blue and the regular paragraph text is blue. And I guess this didn't obey the colors that I was setting on the other screens. So I have to figure out what happened there too. And uh, we were we were you know on a nice roll, but then eventually you get to something uh, that you have to figure out at this point. So looking at our code, it's actually too generic at, at a certain point, um, and we see it we see it in an obvious fashion here that both the heading and the paragraphs changed color, and I only wanted the the, the heading to change. And that's evident right here because UI page theme A is basically telling, not, not specifying enough, it's just saying anything that's in that uh, class change its background color like this and its text color like that. So we have several ways to fix this and I'm gonna say um, we will use this existing uh, class to edit everything besides the heading, and then I'll write a new class for headings, a new selector for headings. So I'm going to leave, uh, actually what I'm going to do is change this color on line 21 to black. I want my text to be black, or whatever color you want for your text. This is going to set the the headings back to black, like that, but it also sets this text to black. So I, I'll probably have much more plain text throughout my app than headings. So I'm going to do it this way, that I'm going to set this CSS back to affect only normal text. And then on the next line, I'll write a little bit of CSS to affect anything that happens to be that particular uh, heading. So on the next line here, I'm going to write dot UI dash page dash theme dash A like before. But then after the A, space H2. So that space is like a plus. The comma is an and and the space to me is a plus, meaning that this has to be inside of this for this that follows to work. So here I've been more specific. If there's a heading 2 and it's inside of the, the page of theme A, change its color to blue. This one doesn't have a dot h2 because I'm affecting any h2 tag. The h2 tag exists. The div center tag doesn't. I invented it, so it's got the dot because it's a class. jQuery Mobile invented UI page theme A. It's not a standard HTML or CSS thing. It's a jQuery Mobile invented thing. It's got the dot. But h2 is something that was invented by Tim Berners-Lee in 1989. It's a tag, so we don't have any dot. You notice it's got a different color and style. And if we save and test that, there's my blue welcome text here, and here, and here. And then when I go to a page like this, there's the blue text and the black text. So let me put the code back here so you can see it. Question? Yeah, we've, we've done an example where you can put a class in a div, you can put a class in an anchor, mm -hmm. and in an image. Can, can you put classes in... Like Pretty much. Yeah. 
yeah, you should be able to attach a class just about anything. Like what, what I've said previously about you can add style to anything, <coughs> which will give us an inline style. We can also add class, which will give us you know, the ability to edit CSS in an external file. So it is doable. And just to confirm, so here's my code again. Uh, this one up here, and I have it here first because I'm affecting everything first. All text becomes black. And then I specify on the next, on the next line, actually I need all heading twos inside of the theme A make them blue. And then it's blue. Right there. Now, this is fine, but if I were to add, remember we've got uh, h2, uh, we've got h1, h2, we could have an h3, and then an h4 for the footer. So what we just wrote will work only for h2. I might need h3 later, and I also want it to be blue. So in this case, I'm actually going to change it to comma uh, dot ui dash page dash theme a space h3. So here now I'm saying if there is also and affect h2 and h3. If there's an h3 inside of the theme A, also affect it this way. I don't have any. I don't think I have any places where I'm using h3, so nothing will really change. But once I use an h3 at some point, it'll be waiting for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Could you also, if, if you left off the dot UI page theme A and just defined a class that just says H2, curly bracket, would then that affect every H2 on your page, whether it's in a page yes. or Yeah, if we do it like that also, yeah. that, that should affect an H2 anywhere, but. Anywhere. Um, I'm just being very specific that it's that it's within the, the page itself because perhaps I wrote H2 in the title, in the in the header or in the footer for some reason. They would change all. They would change everywhere. Yeah. So then specifically, it's got to be in H2 and in the theme A in the main body. All right. So I want to figure out why did this screen not obey the this color there. So that's back to the developer tools, inspect element. And it seems to be that that's why this was set, uh, or this, that this is how this is set. Um, it, 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 it does adhere to UI header, UI title, but then in this particular case, it's inside of um, UI page theme A space UI bar inherit. Inherit. So my current code says wherever there's a bar, make it look like this. But that particular other screen, for some reason, actually has also the inherit class. That, that basic computer classes is H1, not H2. Say that again. The text that didn't change color, that up there at the top where it says basic computer classes, uh -huh. that's an H1. Yeah, it's an H1 everywhere. It's an H1 if we go back here as well, or it should be an H1. I'm going to go back here, and yeah, it's an H1. We, we oh. decided that anything that's up on the header is an H1, and then H2 and 3 in the body, and then H4 in the footer. So the problem isn't that it's a, it's the wrong H, it's oh. that it's a um, it's in a different kind of screen, which is actually ruled by um, UI bar inherit. <coughs> that's what that's showing there. So then I'm going to edit this, to say, okay, anywhere where there's a UI bar A, control it like this, comma, and um, dot UI bar A inherit. 
UI page theme A UI bar inherit. Let's see if that does it. So the comma, when used, uh, will affect more than one selector. Let's see. Let's see if that worked. Yep. There. So now it's got the that gradient color that's visible on the other screens. And it was and it was this here adding comma. And I copied and pasted it. Once I found it in the developer tools, I just copied it. I didn't want to type it wrong, so it's this. Does the order matter? Um, technically, yes, but not in this particular instance because one is not inside of another. It's separate screens. Yes? Just UI header by itself? What about the UI bar A? No, we see that. Because otherwise, you'll lose the UI dot header? Dash header, like that? Okay, that, I think I said before, there's more than one way to skin the digital cat. Uh, so uh, yeah, that one seems to work also. Looking at the, at, the, at the developer tools, I guess if we poke around, we'll see a spot that also shows that. Um, I didn't go for that because I guess what I saw, but it makes sense. I was looking at it too specifically. No, that was an old version. Um, that's true. Didn't do that. I have them in the reverse order. It's not the color. This is in reverse order? I have them in reverse order. I went back to the code that I got from previously and then it's and then it's obeying the color. So yeah. there's a text chat on the other one too. So it wasn't pulling yellow, it was it pulling the text chat But now it yeah. but now. Right. Yeah. So um, this is very specific because it's saying theme A space bar inherit which comes from a higher level. So that's why it's inheriting uh, everything that we've said so far, but I guess when we do the just the UI header, it's not specific enough because there's more pieces to that puzzle. So this is the part about uh, trying something that doesn't quite work, try something else, and that's why it's so important to use this um, these developer tools. They're, they're cumbersome and there's all of these screens and it doesn't all make sense at once, but once you get the hang of using this, uh, you start to figure out, well, this is inside of that, and I can make a change here, and if it doesn't pan out, then just refresh it and then try a different tack, tactic.
right, so I've got a background color changed, my header and footers have changed, H uh, head headings here. I want to deal with changing the, the nav bar. Now that one's going to be more complicated. If you thought these ones that we've done so far are complicated, this is going to be more complicated because a nav bar works with a variety of states. Right now, what I'm looking at here are two states. Before I have clicked, before I have interacted with the button and after, and then also during the time I'm interacting with it. What I mean is right now my mouse is not on top of these buttons, but when I roll over home, that changes, so I've gotten into another state. Uh, this is the over state. My mouse is over the, the element, so I need to define some CSS for that state. Uh, without the hover, it's onto the base state, which has a name, uh, I think it's just link, the, the link state. Uh, and then this one is the active state, I believe, the, the active state or the persist state, which is I've clicked on it already and it's behaving a certain way. And then at the moment when I click on it briefly, it changed to something else. That could be a different color as well, which seems to be the same sort of thing as when it's persist, but it's got a little gradient. Drop shadow, see that? If I hold it down for a moment. So there's those four states. So we have to write um, CSS for basically those four states if we want all four of them controlled. I'm going to see about first, however, controlling the um, the um, this persist here. Uh, and this reminds me that when we were working a while ago, right here, UI button active, UI state persist. This is what is seems to be affecting the um, the state that it looks like it's been clicked. So I'm going to see what happens if I if I use this as a basis to write my CSS code. These need dots. Dot UI button active. Dot UI state persist because they're classes. So that was my starting point. It didn't seem to do it unless I misspelled background color. Nope. Uh, so then I'll, I'll go back to um, the, the developer tools. I'm going to right-click that one, inspect it. Let's see what I can figure out. You know what, maybe I'm too specific in that. Maybe I only need the UI active.
alternative drawing. UI, say that again. Dot UI dash BTN dash active. Like that selector. Yeah. Um, then I'm missing a space. I don't doubt that that's part of it, the UI grid, but we're being very specific in that case, in this case, which is the um, persist, um, the, the state where it's been clicked. Well, I figured out the hover color. That's one thing. Let's let me put that in, and then we'll um, continue. So for this one. So we have UI page theme A, the UI BTN, and then the pseudo selector hover. Remember that I said we've got the states of hover and clicked and a couple of others. So here, this is new, we've got colon hover. So we're saying once we hover, we change the background color as such. And then we've got another one that is UI bar A button. Um, I guess anywhere where there's the bar A and it hovers.
All right, so I found this one in um, in, the, in the developer tools um, with a little bit of testing. Uh, if if I just make it this second part, it affects everything except that inherited page. So if I've got the longer version like this, then it also affects that little back button on that uh, C in that CIS one hundred one page. But here I've got uh, UI page theme A plus UI button colon hover. So when I hover, this happens, comma, and then UI bar A and UI button. And I guess we have to specify HTML there. So now I've got a background color. And when I hover over the nav bar, I get a new, I get my color. And, and I'm just doing a solid color, but again, I could put in a, a a gradient color like for other like everywhere else that I've done. Okay, here is the active This seems to show UI bar A, UI button dot, UI button active. So it did it did right, use the HTML. yeah. So it probably just this. But since Firefox highlighted both of these lines, probably this covers something that we don't quite see. But at the minimum, at the minimum, this is probably what we need. The, the same thing sort of happened up here. If you just do the HTML part, it seems to work in 99% of the places, but I saw that there was one screen where it didn't obey this until I had the, the, other, the other part. So I feel like I'm going to leave 
the longer part like this because this will probably be used elsewhere that I'm not anticipating at the moment. As I test it and maybe I see that I don't need it, then I would remove it just for efficiency so I don't have so much code. So what I did was the compute test button. I was starting to play with that, but I didn't. I didn't trust myself, and I went back. So, um, computed right there. Yeah, and then now that I've uh, changed it now, it's listing it's my version. So you see this is why we hadn't um, started to change colors of our of our app until today because uh, it can be complicated, right? It's trying to figure out what's the color. This is the pros and the cons. There's the big pro about with these data roles and things, I'm able to create an interface very quickly and do these pop-up windows and animations and all of that. The con and you can decide how big the con is, is, well, how do I customize this? There's, um, there's this way that we're doing. I'll show you one more other way, which may or may not be easier, but I want to introduce this to you, and then you can decide to use it or not. But uh, before I look at that, any general questions on, on this? You see the, the, the sort of the workflow. We use the, the developer tools to kind of figure out our, our concept and then actually edit the code in general. Uh, but let me show you which something that might be more useful than the way we're doing it. You'll have to explore it on your own to see what you think about it. But if we go back to jQueryMobile.com Remember this, this is where the documentation is at. jQueryMobile.com And if we scroll down on the home page there, we'll get to a section called Theme Roller. This is supposed to be something that will help you customize your, your, um, your app colors. jQueryMobile.com, we scroll down, Theme Roller. We believe that your web site or app should feel like your brand, not any particular OS, blah, blah, blah. If you click on Theme Roller, then it takes you to sort of a little um, online app kind of thing where you see a preview, which I think it's still set to the old version because it says A, B, C, there's no C. But anyway, um, here's our A, and well, technically, in theory, what you should be able to do is grab a color and drop it right there. That's the color that I want. That's the color that I want. That's the color that I want. And then there's instructions of how to actually apply this, because again, this is this looks like this will solve all my problems, but then there's the issue about connecting this with your particular uh, import download. When you click download, then it tells you, okay, you're going to download some files. You need to put them into your project and add some of these lines of, of code here. And um, it uh, probably works. So we went the, the hardest way because I think it's also very important to look at the tool of the of these developer tools to reverse engineer what you have and this applies to every every website and HTML based app and jQuery mobile has this tool that might give you what you're looking for um, you've got the different buttons normal hover and pressed you can play with that as well so I'm going to give that to you now and, and wrap up the lecture in a bit, and then you can try to figure out, okay, I've made my cool colors. I've made my, I've made my colors for my, uh, for my pineapple, or my, uh, not pineapple, um, watermelon app. And um, 
now I want to apply that to my um, to my app. Well, now it'll be up to you. You look here under 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 this download button or help, and here it gives you a general overview of how this works, how to use this. So follow this, and then also look at the help center. I don't believe so. I've got, for example, header and footer here are just simple colors, background and border. But I would say once I've started with these with these flat colors, then I just open the CSS file and plug in my gradients. Alright, so um, when we come back, what we're going to do is um, since I, since like I said, I think we're we're going at a good pace. I think we will probably start to talk about some JavaScript geolocation, local storage. We'll probably start the JavaScript stuff next time. Our app, visually, I think it's coming together really well. And once I decide on the colors and such, um, the, the, the design of it is coming along pretty well. Um, the content still needs some content, but we can get back to that. I want to start adding some, working with some JavaScript, um, like the um, the geolocation, the map, and um, we're going to do something where we can personalize the app so that we it asks us, please type your name, and then your name will show up in the app so that it's personalized. Uh, that'll be JavaScript and local storage and other cool stuff. So I'm going to save my work in a moment, and you can take a copy of it if you'd like, and uh, we'll wrap up the lecture. But any general questions? All right. So, okay. So we'll um, we'll have some lab time until nine uh, thirty.